Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another course vlog. We're up here in Monterey, California. Actually, this is Marina, California. It's in the Monterey Bay area. And man, oh man, this bayonet golf course is a treat. Really, really tough, tree-lined, cypress tree-lined golf course. Oh man, for under $100, don't miss this on your trip to Pebble Beach. Let's head right out to the first hole, a par five up the hill. Here we go. A must stop on any Pebble Beach golf trip. This one is just down the street from the Monterey Peninsula and there's two courses here on property. This here bayonet is some say the better of the two courses. The other course, Black Horse, has been recently remodeled and is rather wide open and has a lot of flowing terrain. But here we're gonna have to snake through this forest of cypress trees on the first hole. Over the bunker on the left hand side, you're gonna wanna favor the right side off the tee. But as we come into the green and up the hill, you're gonna wanna take on that bunker on the left to give yourself a great angle into this green and you will have a awesome look at the hole. Back right hole location for me today, sitting up on that little bit of a plateau. Now here I was playing about the third group out of the day and I was paired with just one other person, a glorious twosome in this morning. Oh man, you couldn't ask for anything better, pretty much the course to ourselves. A layup here, I had about 300 yards up the hill into this par five, just over the bunker there off the tee, laying it here about 80 yards short of the hole. A little knock down blob wedge for me. I tried to get it all the way back up on this plateau and I succeeded. So only 15 to 20 feet here under the hole for birdie. It was makeable, but we're just gonna cozy it on down there for a tap in par and we can head on down to the second hole. This here is probably the narrowest tee shot you're gonna see all day long. And look at this thing, it is a shoot relatively flat off the tee, there's no bunkers to deal with, just all of these tall cypress trees, and that is plenty. After your drive, coming into the green, we're gonna be dropping down from the fairway, about three to five yards down into this green, and you do not wanna misjudge. If you go long, you can see the hill beyond the hole will just kick your ball even further down away from the green. Now I was trying to play the cut off the tee, but this here was a double cross. Just a little bit left of my target and luckily I had the distance and the carry to get it up and over the trees. I also had the distance and the carry to get it back up and over the trees. Using my lob wedge here from 100 yards, I just sent it up into the air and nailed the middle of the green. 35 feet away for birdie. We just need to cozy this one on down towards that front of the green. It was a slippery one, but a comfy tap in par and we're on to the third hole. The easiest hole on the front nine, quite possibly one of the most gorgeous. Heading straight up the hill, this is right behind the driving range, so you're gonna get a good look of this hole if you're heading down to warm up before your round. That fairway bunker on the left is gonna serve as the main hazard on this short four. And coming into the green, look at the many tiers you're gonna have to deal with on this diagonally sloped green. That back right hole location is just perched in between the bunkers. Now here I'm taking a five iron off the tee. That's my 220 club. I'm trying to lay it short of that fairway bunker. Successfully landed 155 yards into this back hole location. That's a full send nine iron for me because I had a little bit of uphill to compensate. Just beyond the flag for my birdie putt here, 30 feet on down the hill. 
I hit this one just a little bit harder than I wanted and did not expect it to go out of the range of the camera. It was still a makeable par putt and I tapped in the five footer three pars in a row to start the day we're on that par train. Now the first par three of the day is right up on top of the hill and you're gonna have a gorgeous ocean view off in the distance and a view of downtown Monterey. 200 yards to the center of the green, it's gonna play about five yards down the hill. So my 190 yard seven iron should be perfect. Now this here was the second of three rounds out here on my Pebble Beach vacation. Have any of you taken a vacation this summer? Comment down below, I'd love to hear where you've been. Hopefully all over the place as everything is opened back up and all of us have the opportunity to go play that golf that we've always wanted to go play. No time to hop off the par train yet, four in a row to start the day. This fifth hole, 343 yards heading straight down the hill and towards that beautiful ocean vista. Don't get caught up in the view though, you're gonna have to thread the needle off the tee, but luckily the fairway does open up down here towards the green, allowing you to miss left or right. Now the greenskeepers hadn't moved the flag yet for the morning and I'm gonna be facing a front hole location. Now under 350 yards, just another iron for me off the tee. This time it's the two iron, sending it all the way down there so I can play a simple lob wedge from 80 yards to this front hole location. And I landed it pin high, 15 feet for birdie. Oh goodness, it just didn't turn. You know, I was like up the hill, I didn't Sometimes, depending on the slopes of where you're at, it just is really tricky to judge if those putts are gonna be going left or right. Now this sixth hole, the second par three on the front side is very, very long. 221 yards to the middle, straight up the hill. Give it all you got. Now a full five iron for me generally goes about 225 yards and I got this just about pin high, but it was way over to the left hand side. A big wide open flop shot here to keep this ball on the putting surface. Any other kind of approach shot here was going to just take off and run on these perfect greens. Luckily I left myself a makeable one 10 feet underneath the hole. For six pars in a row, that there is the kind of putt that just keeps your round going. The seventh hole, another gorgeous heading up the hill, par four. This time the bunker trouble is on the right of the fairway and the entire fairway is gonna be kicking away from that down towards the left hand side. Now they're just building some homes on the left and right of this hole. Last time I was out here 10 years ago, this was straight up into a dense forest. I'm glad they left at least one row of trees on the inside of the hole and you can get a glimpse of just how gorgeous that forest used to be. Now that's not to say it ain't beautiful right now. I mean, playing through this kind of a setting, through these kind of cypress trees is quite unique, especially out here in the Monterey Peninsula area. A smooth pitching wedge for me here, up and over the trees to this back right hole location. I just couldn't quite get it back there and strangely, they were doing some construction right next to the hole location. It's kind of weird to have an audience this close to you, but I do understand the maintenance that they were doing and they've probably replaced all of the fringes around all the greens by now and it's probably looking quite gorgeous. The first bogey of the day, I don't want to talk about that one anymore, so let's head on down to the par five eighth hole. Straight down the hill off the tee, 613 yards from that back tee box. I'm gonna take this one on from the tips, just like the rest of the golf course. 
but the T was moved up, so I decided to move back. That bunker on the left that we just flew over was about 330 yards to clear, so you have more bunkers dotted right and left up this long, narrow fairway to really protect all kinds of layups here. You're gonna be have to be strategic with any kind of shot, especially once you see the shape of this green, long and narrow, really making you come in from a good angle to hold any part of that green. Now, after stepping back to the back tee box, my playing partner said he had never seen anyone fly that left-hand bunker, and well, challenge accepted. I thought I landed this thing right smack in the middle of the sand, but luckily it was just on the back side of the bunker. Now I say luckily, but man, you can see the lie I had. That was a downhill lie, one of the hardest shots to hit with a long iron solid just got a two iron on it all the way down there towards the hole and now we just got to get up and down for the first birdie of the day but i couldn't even keep that chip shot on the green like i said earlier these chips are tough to hold close to the holes as these greens just love to roll out but why couldn't it just let that putt roll out another three inches and into the hole that would have been an awesome birdie to get back after that bogey but it's all right. We're heading into number nine here, the toughest par four on the entire golf course. I don't care what they say about number two. This one is difficult. 475 from the tips and straight up the hill all the way towards the green. Almost a 45 degree angle here on the approach around those trees. It is possible to carry it over the corner if you have enough distance. But coming into that green, look at the bunkers stacked into the hills. That first bunker way short, it looks greenside from the fairway. Don't be deceived, there's nearly no sand up near the green. Now after absolutely nuking the drive on number eight, I had full confidence that I could take this up and over the corner and mission accomplished. Right on the cart path, I took my drop here on the rough and had a beautiful nine iron from 150 yards into this pin and I absolutely flagged it to six feet. But of course, I couldn't convert the birdie putt because it just decided to fall off the face of the planet. A very, very tough golf course out here. We'll see you out for the back nine. Later.